Hi, this is Maggie from Design Code Debug Repeat. Welcome to the channel. In an earlier video, I talked about the complexities of programming with time, and I started a project for myself, writing a program to change the dates from one semester calendar to the next. I started to create the back end for that, but I thought it would be fun to create an interface for it. There is more than one library to do this in Python. I'm going to use PySimple GUI, which I haven't used before. One of my honors students used it last semester for an application, and it seems like a great first GUI library. This is the PySimple GUI website, and I'm going to start by opening my command prompt app and typing pip install PySimple GUI to install the library. And I'm going to copy this program and confirm that this code makes this window, and it does. And then I just want to start playing with the different controls. So this call reference page lists the different controls you can put in a window. And for example, let's add a spin to this. I'm just imitating the pattern I see here. If you click on demos, you'll see there are just tons of demos. So I might also download some of those and play around with them. Once I have an idea of what sort of controls are available, I'll draw an interface and try to build it. I'm going to start with an interface to just the back end that I already wrote before I sketch out on paper an interface that has the ultimate functionality that I want. The old console program allowed the user to specify the start and end dates of the old and new semesters, but the user had to type them in a specific format. It then asked for the old calendar file and the new calendar file name. Let's look at how we can create an interface that allows the user to enter the start and end dates of the old and new semesters in a way that doesn't allow them to make mistakes. I have here the demo program. It's quite simple and I want to work with this, but I'm going to change it to remove the while true loop. This is unnecessarily bad programming. And I'm going to add a Boolean variable called running and initialize it to true and write while running. And then we'll set running to false if the user clicks the close box. I don't think I'll have a cancel button so we'll remove that from the event loop. I'll also rename this program to calendar underscore GUI dot pi. Now, when you're creating a GUI, you're going to start by adding your components to the window. Some of these will respond to user clicks and typing to obtain inputs. Others will not respond to the user. They might be static labels, or they might be components that display program state and some might allow both. So after you've added your components to the window, your program will sit in a loop called an event loop. An event loop waits for events to be generated. The events will be generated by the components or at a lower level, they're generated by the operating system when the user clicks in a window of your application or types or does something else with hardware like inserts a USB drive while your application is active. The important thing to know is that you're not generating the events they're being generated behind the scenes by the library that we're using, PySimple GUI, and we're just going to respond to them in an appropriate way. And what is an event? It's some form of data that is available to you when the user interacts with your program. In PySimple GUI, it's a tuple composed of the name of the component that the user interacted with, so a string, along with the state of all of the components in the window, a dictionary. Let's annotate those variables, event and values, from this line, event values equals window.read. That's where we're getting the event that just happened. Event is a string, and values is a dictionary of component state pairs. If you ever see something and you don't know what it is, run in the debugger and look at it, or print it while the program's running. That's what I do. In this demo, up at the top, we create a list called layout, and the list is a list of lists of PySimple GUI components. We then create a window and pass that layout in as an argument. After that, there's a loop that processes events. It first gets the events from the window, and it then handles the events, and the only events that are being handled are clicking the close box of the window. You can see in the event loop, we have an if event equals, and then the name of an event. We're going to give our components names, 
and that's how we'll check if they're the components that the user has interacted with. So we'll have a big if elif statement here for all of the components the user has interacted with so we can respond appropriately to whatever the user does. Now what we're going to do is put the components we want in the window. I think that for the date, I'd like to have combo boxes, which are like menus inside the window for the month, day, and year. Month and year will always have the same values in them, but the day box needs to change based on what month and year are chosen. Back to the complexity of date time. And just like a cooking show, I already have that version of the program under the counter here ready to go in the oven. This is dategui.py. Let's run it first so you have something to visualize when I talk about how the various components work. I have a tiny little window with the title Calendar Updater. In the window, there is a label, Old Semester Start Date, and that does not change. Next to it is a date, January 1st, 2019. And below that are three combo boxes, one each for month, day, and year. Right now, the values of those combo boxes match the date, January 1st, 2019. Let's look at the days we can choose from. We have 1 through 31. Choosing 31 changes the text to January 31st, 2019. Let's change the month to June. June does not have 31 days, so the day was changed to 1. I could have changed it to 30, but I thought it would be better to give a stronger signal to the user that the day has changed when a month is chosen that doesn't contain the current value for day. If we look at the days list, we can see we can choose from 1 to 30. Let's choose February. And because it's not a leap year, we can choose from 1 to 28 in the days combo box. And if I change the year to 2020, I can choose from 1 to 29. Each time we choose a new value from the combo box, the value of the field next to the old semester start date updates to reflect our choice. Let's look at the code. Now, I've broken this into functions because it's very quickly going to become too complex if it's one monolithic script. Plus, there's functionality that I'm going to want to reuse in the next iteration of this program. So let's start with the main function. Let's start with this layout variable. This is a list of lists, and this defines the layout of the components in the window. In my window, I have essentially two rows of components, the two text components in the top row, and the three combo boxes in the bottom row. Each of these rows is a list. So you can see I have one list, which is SG text old semester start date, comma, SG text January 1st, 2019, key equals old semester date. That's one list of two components, text components. The first one is static and contains only the value argument, what value the field has. But the second one has both a value and a key. The key is how I access that element later to change the value. So I want to make that a unique name. And I'm using all caps for my keys but you can adopt whatever convention you want. The next row is the three combo boxes, and those have as the first argument the list of values, and then I've given them a key so I can access them and change their values or get the current value. And I've given them a default value, which is January for the month box, one for the day box, and 2019 for the year box, as you saw when the program ran. I then create the window with the title Calendar Updater, and I pass in the layout. Now in the event loop, each time through the loop, we check and see if there's been an event with window read. That will return a tuple of the key value for the component the user interacted with and a list of the values of all of the components. So that's being unpacked into two variables. Event is the key and values is the values of all of the components. So we handle a quit event, and then I'm checking if the event, the key of the component that was interacted with, is any of my combo boxes. And if it was, I call this update date function that I wrote. Let's look at that. Now I've written this somewhat generally. 
it takes parameters for all of the keys I'm interested in so that I can use it for the old semester date, but eventually I'm going to want to be able to have the same set of controls for the new semester date. So I want to be able to use this function to update both of them. I get the current month, day, and year values from the components, and then I check what month it is. I was thinking of the old rhyme here, if month in September, April, June, November, those are the 30-day months. So if it's one of those months, I'm setting a variable last day of month to 30. If it's February, then I'm going to use the calendar modules is leap function to find out if the year is a leap year. If it is, I set the last day of month variable to 29, and if it isn't, I set it to 28. And the default value for that variable is 31, if it's one of the other months. Now that I have the last day of month variable, I'm going to generate a new list of days. I'm using range, so range 1 to the last day of month plus 1. And then I have to check if the currently selected date is in that list of dates, because it might have been 31, for example, and the month might now be June, as when we ran the program previously. So I have to check if the current day is in the new list of days, and if not, I'm setting it to 1. As I said earlier, you could set that to the last value in new days, which would probably be closer to the original value of day. But I've chosen to set it to 1 because I'm afraid it might be less noticeable that it's changed if I change it from 31 to 30, for example. To access an element so we can send it the update message, we use window, sub, then key. That's the string we gave the component when we created it. So I'm using window sub day widget to get the day combo box and update it to have the new set of values and the new value. And then we use window sub text widget to get the text box that shows the currently selected date and update that by sending the update message and passing in a formatted string of the current month, day, and year. So when this program runs, it sets up the window and then the event loop executes until the user clicks the close box. Each time through the event loop, we ask the window if there has been an event. If there has, we take that information, what component the user interacted with, and the current state or value of all of the components, and we update what the user sees accordingly. We don't update the component the user interacted with. When they make a choice from the month combo box, for example, the month combo box will show what they chose. But if we need to update other parts of the state, such as the text box that shows the currently selected date, and the list of days which might have changed if a new month or year was chosen, then we update those. We call this handling events. We're handling a combo box event by updating the text box and possibly updating the day combo box. In our handling, we can access any component that we've added to the interface by indexing the window with the key of the component. We can send the update message to change the component's state. So that is an introduction to creating a graphical user interface using PySimple GUI that responds to user input by updating components of the interface. I'm going to keep working on this program, but I think this video is long enough. If you're interested in seeing more, please let me know. I plan to add a file picker so the user can choose the file that contains the old calendar and connect my back end to the completed front end so I can run the program from the GUI. I'm then going to add more functionality. I hope you found this useful and interesting. As always, have fun and keep coding.